Good morning and welcome to Raising the Standard, where we promise you the Word of God that will build your faith and challenge you to the call of God in your life, sharing Jesus Christ and meeting the needs of people in spirit, soul, and body. Well, it is a privilege for us to be able to join you today, and we just thank God for you. We appreciate you so much, and we thank God for what He's doing through this Raising a Standard television broadcast. And remember, one word from God, I put two up again, but one word from God will change our lives forever when we apply that word to our life. And I just thank God that you are applying the word to your life and, and that makes us more efficient doers of what God tells us to do. And because of that, we can walk in the blessings of God. We just thank God for you. We want you to know at Reaching World Bible Church, we're excited about what God is doing, and we're excited about you tuning in. A lot of you on, week, on a weekly basis and getting the Word of God. And uh, we encourage you to join us on our live stream services Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We thank God for uh, that Reaching World Bible Church Facebook page and the Reaching World Bible Church YouTube channel. You can join us on either platform and and be blessed by the Word of God. And uh, we just thank God so much that that a, a lot of you are, and you're letting us know that to continue to stop us and let us know that. Uh, you can uh, also, we have a midweek service that we call the Reaching You with the Word at 11 a.m. on Wednesdays. And then we have a rebroadcast of that same service at 7 p.m. And that's where Sister Ella and I go ahead and and I join you with comments and share the word. We can answer short questions about the message, but, but we just thank God that the word is going forth and people are being changed and, and, and being blessed by, by the supernatural blessings of God. Well, this morning we're going to get right into to our teaching that uh, we've been doing and probably winding up today on this particular subject. Pastor, what have you been talking about? We've been talking about steps to answered prayer, steps to know that our prayers have been answered. And we looked over various scriptures in the Word of God to help us to do that. And we went over these uh, steps that you and I should take to uh, join just a total commitment with God's Word to become a doer of the Word and not just a hearer only in our communication with God. Prayer, remember, shouldn't be a monologue. Prayer should be a dialogue. And we talked about some of the steps. We said uh, step number one was decide what you want from God. That's, that's the initial thing that we all must do is decide what we want from God. And then step number two, we said read scriptures that promise the answer that you need. In other words, we need to get in the Bible because the answer is there. God has the answers for us. Step number three is then ask God for the things you want. We have to be specific in what we ask God for and knowing that if we don't ask, the Bible says we, we, don't, we won't have it. Then step number four, we said, is believe that you receive. That's what faith is. Faith is believing and then receiving the blessings of God. And then step number five, refuse to doubt. Don't doubt that what God said in his word is yours and that you can have it and that you can walk in a light of that. If, you, if we don't doubt, then we're going to know that we have what God said we have. And then we talked about on the last time, step number six is meditate on the promises. So important for us to have meditation in God's Word, become a doer of that Word over and over again. And we went over that favorite passage of Scripture that, that, in that one that, uh, you know, that I love to talk about in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 4, starting at verse 20. He said this, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them, God's Word, not depart from thine eyes. Keep them, God's word, in the midst of thine heart. Why? Verse 22 tells us, For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. You know, it's so important that we meditate on God's word because it is life. God's word is life. But we have to find that. I mean, in other words, what do you mean, Brother Henry, we have to find it? We have to look to God's word and search it out. 
and then meditate on those promises that he has given us. But it's so important for us to search God's word. And we, this is where we left off on the last time. God's word says he hears and answers prayer. If the word doesn't depart from before our eyes, we are sure then that we have the things that we ask for. If we keep the word, if we ask the, what, what God what God's word says to us and we and we and we flow with that. You see, if you don't stand by or on the word, God can't stand by you. What'd you say, Brother Henry? It's a key. If you and I don't stand by the word, God can't stand by us. It's so important for us to have the foundation of what we believe, the truths that we walk in must be the Word of God. The only way God works is through His Word. Brother Henry, do you really mean that? The only way that God works in our lives, on our behalf, is by and through and with His Word. His Word, the Scripture says, is medicine. His Word, matter of fact, he is, Jesus is the Word made flesh. So His Word is the most significant part of our getting understanding and being able to walk in a light of what God wants us to do. He moves, God moves in line with His Word. He has magnified His Word above His name. Jesus left us his name operating. Yes, he did. But he magnified his word above his name. So that gives us the significance uh, and evidence of the significance of the importance of us being a doer of the word, living the word, having the word on the inside of us, feeding ourselves with God's word. That's the reason it's so important to study, to show ourselves approved so that we can rightly divide this word of truth. Because then we can walk in that empowerment. Then we can have and we can stand on the word and God will stand in us. If you stand by the word, God will stand by you. The key understanding. Many people pray and pray, but they don't pray according to the word. Well, Brother Henry, I mean, isn't it just important to pray? It is essential to pray. But what are we praying? We must meditate on the promises, but we got to understand that when we pray that to God, we must pray those promises out to him. The Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 7, John 15, verse 7, if you and I abide in him, in, in Jesus, if ye abide in me, Jesus said, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. He just, just didn't say it if we abide in him. He said, and he added, my words must abide in you. God's word must be in us, but working in us. How does God word, God's word work in us? We have to be a doer of it. We have to know what the word says, and we have to incorporate God's word in our everyday life, in our everyday uh, talk, in our everyday actions that we do. You know, Brother Henry, is it really important? I mean, can you actually uh, get the Bible and get scriptures and live that way? We can, but we have to be determined. We have to know that this is our success in action when we incorporate God's Word. If we really want to have success, if we want to have health, if we want to have healing, if we want to have prosperity, if we want to have the blessings of God, if we want to have everything that He promised us in the Word, we must be a doer of that Word. We have to incorporate that and live by it. But Brother Henry, it's impossible to live by the Word. No, it's not. Jesus is our example. Well, He's God. He's God. Yes, but when He walked this earth, he did not walk in his, what we call his Shekinah glory, godly power. He walked as a man anointed by the Holy Spirit as an example 
of how you and I can walk. That's the only way we can keep, be a doer of the word. We've got to know that God has anointed us, that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us to lead and guide us into all truth. And we have to have a knowledge that the word is ours and abide in it. And we, when we abide in him and his word abides in us, then we can act what we will. You know, that's, <laughs> that's a powerful statement. We have to see ourselves with the answer. What answer? The answer to our prayers, the answer to our problems, the answer to whatever it is that we have need of. We have to see ourselves. What do you mean by seeing yourself? Get in the scripture, see examples of people that did the word and were successful and see yourself carrying those same promises out. See yourself as being prosperous. See yourself as paying off all of your bills. See yourself as taking that last house payment, car payment to, uh, to, to, to the uh, dealership or to the owner and give him that check and say, it's paid in full because God paid the price in full for us to have life and life more abundantly. When I know that and when I do my part by doing what the word says and carrying that out, then I'm going to walk in the blessings. That leads us, once we know that, once we have uh, did all these previous six steps, then there's an essential ingredient that we must do. What is that? Step number seven is give God the praise. <laughs> give him the praise. Honor him. Thank him for what he's done. Let him know that you love him and that you appreciate him and that you uh, really are, are, are honoring him by living your life before him and you're praising him. He says that he inhabits, the scripture, the Bible says, he inhabits the praises of his people. He lives there. He lives for it. Matter of fact, that's really blessed us with this entire world to, to not only supply all our needs, but give us the desires of our hearts, the scripture says. But when we praise him and we honor him, the Bible says it's a sweet smelling savor, aroma, perfume in the nostrils of God. He enjoys our commitment. He enjoys our fellowship. He loves our praise. In Philippians 4, 6, Philippians 4, 6, he said this, be careful for nothing. In other words, don't worry. That's what being careful for nothing is. But, but Pastor Henry, it's COVID-19, it's racism, it's uh, economic unrest. He said, don't worry. He said, be careful for nothing. He didn't uh, give out this sickness, this disease, that problem as above what he could take care of. He said, be careful, don't worry for anything, but in everything, not for everything. We don't thank him for the COVID-19. He didn't give that to us. That's a, a disease that comes from the enemy. The devil was the one to come to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundant. He said, but in everything, while all this is going on, Brother Henry, why it's going on? Why I'm under attack? Especially while you and I are under attack. But in everything, how? By prayer, talking to God, communication with God, and supplication, that's a type of prayer, with thanksgiving, another type of prayer. When we're doing this, we're thanking him that he saw us through. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Let God know that you're thankful that he's with you. Let him know that you're thankful that he hears your prayer. Let him know that you're not worried because you know he has your back. He not only has your back, 
He's got your front. He's got your sides. He's got, he's got your mind. He's got everything taken care of when we trust him, when we acknowledge him. He said, don't worry. In other words, the words be careful for nothing mean in mean for us not to be anxious. We see in the Amplified Classic of this particular verse, the Amplified Classic, it says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. You know, that's a strong statement. Don't fret or have any anxiety. But Brother Henry, it's hard not to be anxious or to be fretful when people are dying and when uh, people are, when, when everybody seems to be against each other. Well, God told us, he was aware that these things, uh, this, this, these things have just not just started happening. They've always been in a world that the enemy has tried to cause us to be anxious. He said, do not fret or have any, that's not any at all, any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance, and there are circumstances that we can get in, and in everything. How can I do that? By prayer and petition, us fellowshipping with God, us reminding God of what he, he said, this, this amplification. And remember, the Amplified Classic is not a translation. It amplifies certain words. He said, a, by prayer and petition, a definite request. In other words, you're definite about what you're speaking about, about to God. You're specific. And while you're doing this, with Thanksgiving, being thankful all the time. Continue to make your wants known to God. Pastor, I knew God would supply my need, but this verse said he would, he, he would give us our wants, our desires. He told us that, that he would give us the desires of our heart. That's part of his promises. When we give God the praise, we're honoring him. We're, we're letting him know that we are thankful for him seeing us through every problem, every situation, every circumstance. He's gone ahead of us. He knows what the problem is before it ever got started. And he has the answer. But for you and I to walk in the empowerment of that answer, we've got to incorporate his word in our lives and do it, declare it, and know it. And then once we have that and we are consistently walking, reading, studying the show ourselves for prayer, we're consistently going to the word first, going to God first because he's the word made flesh. Then we're consistently giving him praise. We're thanking him. But, you know, the fact is, as long as we fret and are anxious in our prayers and our living, fasting won't work or do anything for us. Lots of, well, you know, fast will change God. No, fast, fasting does not change God. It's important. What does fasting do then, Brother Henry? It changes us. It gets us in a position where we put all the other circumstances, situation, we get our focus off of those things and by, by fasting food or fasting uh, computers or fasting things that grab your attention. Then we put our attention on God and his word. You see, when you fast, you should increase your input or your uh, uh, reading and study of God's word. And then communicate with him. Talk to him. This verse again says, with thanksgiving, and this comes after praying about the matter. We thank God for the answer after we have prayed. We thank him for uh, the definite request that we've made. We thank him that we have the answer. Even before the manifestation has taken place, we give him thanks. Well, Brother Henry, you mean I should start thanking God before I have what I what I uh, have prayed for in my hands? Yes. Why? Because you're showing him that you trust him and that you know when you make a request to God, you know the scripture says his answer 
is always yes and amen when we ask him anything according to his word that he said was ours, it's ours. Well, Brother Henry, it's taking a lot, a lot of time. doesn't matter how much time it takes. I know it matters to us <laughs> and it matters to God. But a lot of times God's allowing us to get in the right position. He's allowing us to uh, be, grow stronger in some areas so that when we receive those things, it's a blessing and not a curse. Because you and I have to realize if God gave us things that we weren't ready to use and weren't ready to handle, it wouldn't be a blessing. It would be a curse. But he allows us to grow. He allows us to mature. Thank God for that, that he allowed you to become stronger in faith, that he allowed you to hear these truths that cause you to realize, I need to change my actions here. I don't need to associate with this particular situation anymore. I, I've, um, that's not who I am anymore. I've grown away from that. And he gave you and I space to mature, to grow up, to not no longer be children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine that comes from all other, other places, but we matured and had our minds renewed or transformed through and with and by the Word of God. That's the reason it's so important for us to continually hear truths of God's Word that will help us to grow up and mature. You know, it'd be terrible for you to give your keys to your car and tell your two-year-old son to go, or, or your five-year-old son, or your 10-year-old son to go out and drive to New York City. Why? Because you, I, I, I know that you can, I, I'm just believing that you're going to be able to, I'm just believing my faith that you're going to be able to get there. No, that's ridiculous. That's ignorance gone to see. That 10-year-old, that 5-year-old is not able to drive. He's not able to handle the car. Now, the car is a blessing. It may have all the, the, the best things. It may have the where, where it can back up almost by itself like some of the new cars. Does, but that 5-year-old is not capable of handling that. He does not have the maturity. And a lot of Christians are at a level where they're not able to handle some of the things that once they've grown and developed, it will be a blessing to them. When that young man gets to be 16, gets his driver's license, have, have driven uh, maybe a few years and, and have, have matured, been in school and had some experience, been taught well, then, uh, then he's able to uh, drive and get to where he needs to be, and he wants to go to New York or anywhere else that, that he needs to go. He's well able to do it because he's grown up. And now that vehicle that would have been a curse to him when he was five because he would have killed himself with it is a blessing to him and everyone else around him when he's 25 and able to handle it, able to pay it off because <laughs> he's working and got a job. Amen. All the parents said, amen, pastor, preach it. <laughs> Glory to God. God wants us to know that when we make those requests, we ought to be thankful to God. And we thank God for the answer after we have prayed. The final step to answered prayer is to lift our heart to God constantly, consistently in gratitude and increase praising God for what he's done and what he's doing for us right now. When we honor him by praising him and acknowledge him in him that he's a good God and that he's worthy to be praised, then we're going to walk in victory. Thinking faith thoughts and speaking faith words Lead the heart out of defeat into victory. Don't accept defeat. Don't allow it to come into your realm of thinking. Don't allow it to come into your realm of, of your responsibility. Do not be denied. Don't quit. It's your family right, your Christian right, 
You're part of the family of God, right? You're redemptive, right? You've been redeemed from the curse to have what God has promised you. It's yours and it will come. So accept it and don't allow anything else. As we come to a close, one thought that uh, one of the great ministers of time past, Andrew Murray, said this. It is not in good taste to ask God for the same thing over and over again. If when you do pray again for something that hasn't materialized, don't pray for it in the same way, because that would be doubt and unbelief. Remind God, what should I do then, Pastor? Brother Murray said, remind God of what you asked for it and what his word says about it, and then thank him for it, thank him that it's done. These steps will cause us to walk in the blessings of God. God wants you to be blessed. And so at yeah, Reaching World Bible Church, we invite you to our live stream, 10 a.m. on Sundays, today at 11 a.m., rebroadcast of that at 7 p.m. We want you to be blessed. We want you to know that we love you, God loves you, and you can have what the Word says you can have. Well, we see our time has slipped away from us once again. God bless you. Remember to feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. We'll see you next week. You have a blessed day, and God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.